So just recently, I dropped my Halloween Hornet Speculation Map 2 update video talking about the most recent rumors as to what's going to come to this year's Halloween Hornets, and it seems like in response to that, Halloween Hornets, the official account, has dropped this video titled Do Not Watch, and over the last two days or so, the entire fan community has been in a frenzy trying to decipher the clues, trying to figure out what could be coming to this year's event, and just get an idea of the direction they're going for Halloween Hornets 32. And originally, I wasn't going to talk about this just because, again, it's not something super concrete, it's really, really cryptic. This isn't a house announcement, this isn't an IP that's coming to the event, this is just a teaser. But there's enough here, I think, that could be leading us in the right direction as to where they may go with the event at large that I do want to talk about because I think it is pretty interesting. Now, I want to say before I dive into this video, none of this stuff is confirmed. This is all just teaser. This could all just be Halloween Horror Nights trolling us. So anyway, let's just dive into this video. I'm going to do it piece by piece and talk about stuff that I find interesting. Let's jump right in. This week, we'll be talking about a conspiracy over two decades in the making. We'll uncover the truth about what's really going on at Halloween Horror Nights. The signs are everywhere, hiding in plain sight, if only you know where to look. Okay, so immediately we open with this podcaster, looking like she's almost reading off of a teleprompter, doing this sort of monologue situation. Now, she's wearing an HHN 25, uh, the Jack shirt. Now, a lot of people are talking about, oh, yeah, this might be hinting at Jack, or something related to HHN 25. I don't think it's directly that um just because they have done this in the past uh most notably in the scream squad video from last year one of the kids was wearing one of the jack 25 shirts and it didn't really mean anything beyond it just being a halloween horror night shirt a recognizable halloween horror night shirt so i don't know if this is going to have as much meaning within this video but it is something that a lot of people are grabbing on and it makes sense it is something easy to identify with how many times have you gone to that event and one of those so-called characters warned you to keep your friends close to never ever look back, you probably laugh or scream and think it's all an act. But what if it's not? Is it just fanciful role play or something rooted in sinister origin? Now, this is relatively ambiguous when it comes to the event itself, right? Talking about the role of the characters, talking about uh, keeping your friends close and never looking back, you know, kind of goes back to that never go alone idea. And she talks about that a little later in this video, um, referring to the never go alone tagline we had for two years. But I think this also is an important to keep in mind. I'm not going to talk about this directly now because I think this is more relevant once we get to my big theory as to what this could mean. Um, so I don't really have much to say on that at this moment, but I think it is very interesting that these are sort of the lines and the words chosen by this podcaster. What really happens to those of us who ignore the signs and go alone? What if the legend of HHN is more than just a legend? Now, I really love that ending line. What if the legend of HHN is more than just a legend? Now, this refers back to the legend is real sort of idea we got back with those early teasers about a month ago, and that tipped a lot of people off to thinking this could be either based on like urban legends or myths, folklore, or the legendary truth, uh, that aspect of Halloween Horror Nights lore. And I think it's still up in the air whether uh, the, any of those ideas are actually true. The legend of HHN is being used very, very vaguely for a reason but it's here where we cut to static and see about you know the next nine minutes or so of static so i'm obviously not going to show the whole thing i'm just going to talk about some specific moments that stand out to me Now, first up, we see the runes that are also familiar to some of the initial HHN teasers. Obviously, these runes are gonna play an important part in the event, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are is that like a message here that is waiting to be decoded once we get to the event or once we get a little closer. Here, we also see a little bit of fog. Also, going with the runes, usually they're paired together in those initial like TikTok teasers, and I think the fog is going to play a very important role. Now, after some more static, we have this little break where we can make out some sort of image in the background, and it looks like one of the pumpkin characters from the 30 years, 30 fear scare zone back at HHN 30. Now, this can be relatively insignificant because this isn't like a known character or anything. This isn't like an icon. I think it also has a very uh, ambiguous face as well. Like you have to look at it a few times to really decipher what character this is. So I think it's getting a lot of people in a frenzy. What 
whether it's a previously known icon, uh, whether some of the colors are tipping people off in a certain way. Um, so I think it's the perfect clip to use um, because it isn't super discernible who this character is. Okay, and about almost seven minutes in, we have our biggest clue yet within the static. We have this face behind the static, this white, very pale face with some heavy, labored breathing and a little bit of freaky laughter. Now, a lot of people thought this was pointing to Jack the Clown coming back to HHN 32, and I'm gonna tell you, I don't think that's happening. For one, they really like to save Jack for those big anniversary years, and I think this year it'd be really weird to just pull him out and throw him at the event. Also, the breathing and laughter doesn't really sound a lot like Jack's. It has a different sort of cadence to it. It almost sounds raspy and sort of wheezy a little bit, um, maybe from an older character. Wink, wink. I don't think this is Jack's voice here, and I don't think it's Jack's face because the face looks also a little older, a little more uh, decrepit than Jack. <laughs> And just after that, we have this really fun clip of what looks to be a house walkthrough. I can't tell exactly what house walkthrough this is, or maybe this is one that hasn't been posted to their YouTube. Just sort of a fun way to reference past HHN, not really meaning anything in particular for what's coming, um, but also just a fun inclusion nonetheless. <gasps> Now we get to get a better look in this final clip of the podcaster being possessed and you know she's sitting in the chair but she's now looking up into the air and this really feels like Vecna. I don't know why it just get, it gives me that Vecna vibe. Uh, it really reminds me of some of the possession scenes in Stranger Things 4 but also could be the Exorcist. We did have the Exorcist Believer on the speculation map and I'm not sure how possessions work in that movie but this could be something tying in with that property which has been heavily rumored. Now, now, there was a lot going on in that video and it might be hard to kind of break down everything that's happening and I think that's partially intentional. I don't think this all has something to do with it. I don't think it all has nothing to do with it either. I think there is some stuff that is irrelevant, some stuff that's just thrown in there sort of that play with the fans and have a little bit of fun like the house walkthroughs, like that scare zone clip. But I do think some of it, like the possession, like that face in the static, and like some of the wording choices um, by the podcaster in the beginning are possibly leading to what is happening for this year's event. Now, I mentioned before that I think the possessions could have something to do with either Stranger Things or The Exorcist. Maybe it's sort of a punishment for revealing the truth, as uh, the podcaster does talk about revealing the truth and, and finding the truth in the signs right in front of you. So maybe we could be seeing the repercussions of that from the angry spirits. Now, though, I really want to talk about this face in the static and my theory as to who that is, because there's a lot of clues that set it up to be, you know, some characters, maybe like Jack or Chance, but I think there is also a lot setting it up to be someone we haven't met yet. A lot of fans have been talking about this, and I think, I think this is where they might be going with this. I think this could be the true in-person introduction that we're getting to Dr. Oddfellow. Now, those who are familiar with HHN lore, specifically the lore behind Jack the Clown, know a lot about Dr. Oddfellow and his story. Now, Dr. Oddfellow was introduced alongside Jack at Halloween Horror Nights 10, and Dr. Oddfellow was actually Jack's boss, owning the Carnival of Thrills in which Jack performed at. Both of the men were wanted by the authorities, so fearing imprisonment, Dr. Oddfellow pretty much killed Jack, or had Jack killed. Now, after Jack had returned from the dead, he had been looking for Dr. Oddfellow to enact his revenge until he eventually murdered him, and this is more part of the Carnival of Carnage backstory. However, just as Jack returned from the dead, Dr. Oddfellow could also return from the dead for this year's Halloween Horror Night sort of lurking in the shadows, ready to make his debut once again. Or the part where Jack murders Oddfellow could be retconned and he could just be roaming free and hiding from Jack until he returns to Halloween Horror Nights and we kickstart this story once again. There's that quote about 
about never looking back, and maybe that could be a reference to the past of Dr. Oddfellow and Jack never looking back to that past, sort of moving forward within his story. He was introduced in 2001, which would make the two decades comment slightly relevant here as it's about two decades in between. And the idea of keeping your friends close that she says early on, you know, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. That's the full quote that a lot of people know. And of course, Jack and Oddfellow, they are enemies at this point. So maybe that could be hinting towards more Dr. Oddfellow, Jack relationship developing, um, not just this year, but maybe setting up for HHN 35 with Jack's return. Maybe that can be a clear plot point and the lines about fanciful role play and it all being just an act or does it have some more sinister implications does fit in with the circus aesthetic of Dr. Oddfellow and Jack too, but specifically here, Dr. Oddfellow. He was the one originally where Jack sort of revealed his sinister past to and then stabbed him in the back. So maybe this all has to do with that backstory that we know from Halloween Horror Nights legend, wink wink, but haven't seen play out in real life. It's been a character that fans have really been wanting and we also did have that circus tent cloud house on the speculation map. So maybe that could be the house for Dr. Oddfellow. So yeah, that's I guess my big theory. I think this trailer, if this trailer means anything, I think it could definitely be leading to Dr. Oddfellow being included at this year's event for the very, very first time. I think they're going to have a lot of fun in sort of teasing the fans with announcements. They have been doing that for the past few months now, and I really just can't wait to see where this goes, uh, if it does go anywhere, in sort of predicting the outcome of this year's event. Well, let me know what you think of this sort of breakdown in the comments. Do you think Dr. Oddfellow could be coming? Do you think it's someone else that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you like Halloween Horror Nights videos, these breakdowns, speculation map updates, announcement updates, construction updates when the time comes, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I thank you all for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.